Hey everybody, welcome to another Pro Acoustics Tech Talk. Today we're going to be talking all about um, how to set up a sound system in your school gymnasium. All right, so when we're looking at a sound system for a gymnasium, the first thing we need to think about is uh, the speaker location. Uh, gymnasiums are really, really challenging spaces because we got a lot of hard surfaces, hard wood for the, uh, the basketball court or volleyball court. Uh, we've got high ceilings, we've got um, you know, hard, hard walls, we've got bleachers, things like that. So we've got to think through where are we going to put speakers. Um, the other things that we need to uh, also make sure and include is an easy to use mixer. A high quality amplifier and also wired and wireless microphones. Um, so today we're going to analyze a little bit about where we want to put speakers. Um, so the basic idea is um, I've got four different gymnasium uh, layouts here. I'm going to kind of walk you through what some of your configurations may look like for your gyms and how we would address them. So uh, if we start off over here, you know, we've got our uh, half court, we've got a goal on each end. The average school normally is going to have a set of bleachers on one side, um, small mi middle school or uh, small high school. Uh, so in these kind of situations, um, we're going to assume that there's nothing on the far side of the court over here. So we want to make sure and do sound to the court itself, but also to cover our fans. So with the speaker location, the simplest to do is to put them in the center and basically have uh, four speakers firing out in kind of a north, south, east, west kind of configuration to where we're still covering the court, uh, what's the sound spilling onto the court, we're also covering the players on the far bench over here, and we're still covering um, our bleachers down below. Um, this is kind of the basic concept where we can use four individual speakers to, to do this type of coverage. On this far side, we might find that we can tilt these speakers down a little bit at a little bit lower angle to make sure we cover these players over here instead of firing directly into a wall, which can uh, cause a lot of reflections and uh, that kind of thing. Um, so in this kind of situation, we're assuming there is no stage, no uh, upstairs running track, nothing like that. Uh, but this gives us the possibility of um, controlling the sound. You know, we can turn up these speakers louder, um, depending on uh, what kind of amplifier we use, and these softer, and that makes sure to put the sound right in the face of your, uh, your uh, listeners here in the bleachers, and also, like I said, spill out into the court itself. Um, this same basic concept can also be done using like an octasound type speaker, which instead of having four individual speakers is basically uh, one big sphere uh, that has built in horns to fire in a north, south, east, west type of configuration like we have here as well. Um, that's a specialized option we can look into for covering a gymnasium. Uh, there are pros and cons of both, um, but definitely something we can take a look at. Um, moving on from there, we may find that uh, our next gym has bleachers over here, but may also have bleachers on this side as well. The first uh, option, obviously, is to do this same type of configuration. We still have speakers that are firing that way, so uh, now we point those a little bit more at our listeners, uh, at our bleachers. That still will cover sound to the court and still make sure that everybody can hear pretty well throughout the entire space. Um, the main focus with these uh, arrows that I'm drawing here is a speaker you can kind of think of like a water cannon. It's only going to go where you point it. Uh, sound is a disturbance in the air, so we want to make sure to focus the uh, speaker where we want it. That's going to mean that the high frequencies arrive as well as the low frequencies. So in these types of situations, we want to point the speaker at your fans wherever they are. But in this type of situation, we may find uh, that instead of just a few rows of bleachers, we've got a lot of rows of bleachers. Let's say we've got you know, a couple thousand people at a you know, large 5A or 6A type high school. Um, instead of this option, we can actually expand to go with even more speakers, uh, perhaps putting these speakers closer to over the baseline since our bleachers extend out a little bit further. That configuration would look a little bit more like this. So now we're using six speakers to cover uh, our bleachers instead of just using um, two per side. This allows us to get the sound a little bit more up close and personal. The distance is a lot closer from where the speaker is to where the listeners are. Um, and also we've uh, used more speakers to distribute to cover the space. The question then becomes, what about the guys on the court? As I mentioned before, this sound is only going to be traveling in this direction. So if we want to make sure and have coverage on the court, we need to use a couple more speakers. This is why you're going to find a lot of our larger packages have eight speakers instead of six. 
This part uh, may change based on uh, how you use your gymnasium. Uh, if we just are typically using this for assemblies and say we're just typically using this for games, uh, if we want to just make sure the players on the court can hear, we can do you know, a speaker firing this way and a speaker firing this way to make sure the guys on the court can hear. But if you tell me, sometimes we do graduation in here and we put rows of seats, perhaps we have a stage, a portable stage that we build on this end for graduation. In that kind of situation, I'm not going to want to do these. I'm going to want to do something more like this. Because uh, when, we're, when we're doing these gymnasiums, especially for a school where you may have a lot of different types of applications, we want to think through um, how can we best point the sound at the listeners and how can we also avoid feedback. Now feedback basically occurs when the sound from a speaker is going into a microphone, and which is then being reamplified back through the speaker, back through the microphone. That happens at a particular frequency. There's ways to avoid feedback, but one of the best ways to avoid feedback is to keep from pointing the speaker directly at the microphone. So in this situation where I've got my little portable stage for my graduation, if I've got a microphone right here, I don't want to do this option of speakers because this speaker's firing right back at it. It, in the case of the centrally mounted speaker, like the Octasound, if I've got a stage right here and I put a microphone on that stage, I still have this Octasound speaker firing back into it as well. So in that case, I want to do something like this by like framing the speakers on each side of the stage. This keeps from pointing the sound directly at that microphone and it also still makes sure to cover all the fans that I mentioned that may be um, for graduation sit seated in chairs on the court itself. So uh, this can also be applied, you know, if this stage gets set up on that end sometimes. We've got a lot of options there. The next thing to review is, uh, like the middle school I went to, some spaces actually have stages already built in. So we may have bleachers on this side, but over here, we've got a stage. So in this configuration with the stage, like I mentioned, we don't want to point, spe uh, point speakers directly at our stage because that's going to lead to more feedback uh, by putting that sound back towards it. So instead, we want to kind of keep this concept in mind, sound going away from the stage since we're going to have lots of microphones on our stage normally. So in that case, I still would use four speakers, but instead of pointing the speakers here, I'm going to do all four speakers here to cover my fans and to cover the cord itself. And the sound will now travel from here on down to my listeners. Um, this keeps to avoid, helps to avoid feedback, also helps to uh, make sure we have plenty of sound to throw across the court, and um, also kind of keeps from having speakers in different rows and different levels, which can get a little bit confusing in, with what we call uh, phasing, and, uh, which can affect intelligibility. Basically, the idea is, guys, if we can keep our speakers kind of in the same general location, it's going to focus the attention uh, back towards those folks. So, uh, you know, your listeners here are going to know the sounds coming from there and then therefore pay attention to the stage. And also, when these sound waves are arriving, they're all arriving basically at the same time. If we were to put a speaker here, this sound is going to arrive much sooner than this is, which is going to make things really unintelligible and difficult to hear and is really something we want to avoid. So, no, we don't want to do that. We want to do this type of option. Now, this same kind of configuration can be done if we have a stage on one end. Um, I've also done a number of gymnasiums over the years where we've got a, one set of bleachers, sometimes perhaps two. Um, in this case, we'll go ahead and do two sets of bleachers. And now we've got a stage over here. This stage may be behind this goal. This goal may fold up, and then now we've got a full stage over here. Uh, once again, we don't want to point the microphones at that stage because that's going to lead to feedback. Instead, we're going to put speakers firing away from the stage. That'll cover the court. That'll cover the bleachers. Bleachers, court. And we've done what we can to avoid feedback. Um, we are also going to make sure we have a high power amplifier to power these speakers. We're going to point them uh, at our fans, not in opposite directions. We're going to make sure all the sound is coming from one particular area. And that's going to help us to get the clearest, fullest sound that we can. This is primarily some of the main setups that we do for uh, these types of configurations. Uh, you do have an option sometimes, guys, of using individual hanging or pendant type speakers. 
Um, this kind of helps to cut down on the overall reflections of some of these big speakers. Let's say instead we do three rows of three pendant type speakers. And those will fire down. That works great, especially if our main focus is int intelligibility. But if we're doing any kind of stage reinforcement, any kind of main assemblies where we're gonna have microphones walking around, this sometimes can be a problem. Because like I mentioned, if I've got a principal standing right here with a wireless microphone directly underneath the speaker, he's gonna have feedback to contend with and that kind of thing. Versus if we've got sound coming from a stage or a particular area, or even in this case, if we got a microphone right here in the middle, there's less feedback because that's not being focused directly towards that speaker. So um, hopefully this has kind of helped uh, you guys to understand um, your speaker configuration options a little bit better. With any of these, we can pair different types of mixers. Um, we can do more pro audio type slider or fader type mixers. We can do nice, easy to use rotary knob mixers for the um, you know less uh, technically inclined. We can do iPad controlled mixers. We can make any of those configuration changes we need and do as many wireless microphones as we may need as well. So if you've got questions about what we've done here today or would like to talk a little bit further, definitely reach out to us, www.proacousticsusa.com or give us a call, 888-256-4112. Uh, leave me some feedback down below. Let me know what you think and uh, click like and subscribe and let us know if we can help with anything else. Thanks guys.